the door Christ the everlasting God Reigning at the Father's side from eternity Wrapped in everlasting light Clothed in majesty The beginning and the end Christ the Savior King of glory and of grace Reign forever 
Good morning folks and a very warm welcome to Ellen Parish Church this morning. My name is Alistair Bruce and I'm the minister here in Ellen Parish Church. As you can see we're not in the church building, we're in the outdoors once again. We're not able to join together in our church buildings because of the coronavirus situation and the continued lockdown that we are experiencing. But we are delighted to be able to bring worship to you in this way. So however it is that you're joining with us this morning, thank you for taking the time and spending it uh, with us in worship of God. Normally at this time of year in, in May, we would be um, looking forward to the General Assembly um, where a lot of the decisions that happen in the church are made, a lot of policy decisions are, are agreed on. The General Assembly has been cancelled this year which is a very, very unusual situation. And normally we would, uh, we would change over moderator during the General Assembly uh, but uh, uh, but that can't be done in the normal way. So we are still changing moderator. We, we thank and pray for Colin, Colin Sinclair who has been uh, the moderator for the last year and we pray for Martin Fair who is minister in our broth and is going to be installed on Saturday as the new moderator. This will be uh, streamed live on Facebook and on the Church of Scotland website so if you want to watch Martin being installed as the new moderator then please uh, go to the Facebook page the uh, Church of Scotland Facebook page at 11 o'clock on Saturday the 16th of May and you'll see him being installed as our new moderator. And then the day a day later on Sunday the 17th of May we have uh, the church is putting on Heart and Soul. Normally that's that's a big event that takes place in Princess Street Gardens but again because uh, because of the situation we're in that, that can't, take, take, can't take place. But they have done something virtual, so there's various events happening um, online. So again, go to the Church of Scotland website um, and onto their Facebook page on Sunday the 17th of May between 2 o'clock and 4.20 um, and you'll be able to experience some of Heart and Soul live. So we look forward to, uh, to being able to join in uh, with that. So let's just take a wee moment to still our hearts for worship. We gather to worship in the name of Jesus Christ, our living cornerstone, who though rejected by the world, was chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let us be built up into a spiritual house for God, offering, offering sacrifices of worship and praise that are pleasing in his sight. Let us worship God together. I'm going to uh, pass on over um, to, uh, uh, to Nessa and to Karen and to Harriet as they bring our Bible story this morning, which is, um, 
Um, oh gosh, I've lost what it, what it is. Bear, bear with me a minute. Um, hold on. Um, not really very. Right. What, 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 what are we doing for the Bible? I, lost and found. Lost and found. Over to you, Nessa. Hello, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Today's story is a lost and found. Jesus is friends with a lot of bad people. That's not right, the grumblers kept on saying. But God loves and cares about everyone, not just good people, Jesus said. And he told them this story. Once upon a time, there was a father who had two sons. The older boy helped on the farm, but the younger one said, Give me my share of your money now. I want to have some fun. That made his father sad, but he gave him the money anyway. The boy left home and went far away. The fun didn't last. His money was soon spent. The boy got a job. It was feeding the pigs. He was so hungry, he could have eaten the pig food. He was very unhappy too. This is silly, he thought at last. Why don't I just go home? No one's hungry there. I'll tell Dad that I'm sorry I wasted all of his money. I don't deserve to be one of the family, but perhaps he'll let me work for him. So he set off home. All this time his father had waited and watched for his boy to come home. Now here he was, coming down the road. He ran out to meet him. I'm sorry, Dad, I'm so sorry, the boy said. I don't deserve to be one of the family. But his father just hugged him and kissed him. Fetch the boy some clothes, he shouted. Dress him up. We're going to have a party. My boy has come home and I'm so happy. I thought I had lost him, but now he is found. Whatever is going on, the older boy asked when he came in from work. Your brother has come home and your father has given him a party, they told him. A party? After all the trouble he's caused? Dad's never given me a party. It's not fair. He wasn't a bit pleased. He was very grumpy. But his father said to him, You know I love you. I will always love you. One day, everything I have will be yours. Please don't sulk. Today is a day to be glad. Your brother has come home and I'm so happy. I thought I had lost him. But now he is found. Father God, thank you for our families, our brothers and sisters. Thank you for making it up for us when we did our mistakes. Amen. And now let us say the family prayer all together. Our Father, who Lord art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be, be done, done on earth. earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
was a mighty holy praying man. He said, throw him to the den of the scary beast. But God saved our hero from the lion's teeth. My God's the king of the giants. My God's the king of the lions. My God's the king of the creatures of the deep. My God's the king of me. Lost and afraid, all alone in the dark. You're with me. Oh, you're with me. My God's the king of the giants. My God's the king of the lions. My God's the king of the creatures of the deep. My God's the king of me. My God's the king of the giants. My God's the king of the lions. My God's the king of the creatures of the deep. The king, king of me. me. Thank you so much, Karen and Harriet and Nessa and Rachel and all of our young folks for joining in with those actions. So for any of our younger folks, if you'd like to join in in some of the Lost and Found related activities, then you can head on over to the Cardboard Cafe, the Ellen Parish Church Cardboard Cafe Facebook page, uh, where those activities will take place, and Nicola will meet you across there to do those. Um, and if you're not a member of the Ellen Parish Church Cardboard Cafe Facebook page, then just uh, search for that in Facebook and, and click join, and they'll uh, endeavour to, uh, to allow you to join for that. The stream will be up for uh, the rest of the day and further, so if you don't manage to do it just now, then you are able to join in later on. And Pam is going to be hosting a Zoom chat with some of our older, younger people, and so if you'd like to do that, the information is all in the thread, or you can uh, you can ask Nicola and she'll be able to point you in the right direction through Carver Cafe Facebook page as well. In 1998, a group of archaeologists digging in Jordan came across one of the most significant finds the world has known. During their excavations, they unearthed a building in Aqaba, which was identified as a Christian church because of the way it was built, the fact that it was eastward facing, and other artifacts like glass lamps and tombs with crosses on them that they found. But what was significant about this find was the date of the building. Thomas Parker, who led the excavations, identified the building and dated it somewhere between 293 and 303 AD, which made the Aqaba Church the oldest Christian church in the world. With buildings this old, of course, there is a certain amount of uncertainty and debate, though. The Dura Europas Church in Syria is also considered to be the oldest church in the world, as it was built in 233 AD. It's thought that the original building was a house before it became a church. However, recently archaeologists haven't been able to verify if this church still exists because it's located in an area of ISIS occupation. Of course, according to tradition, the first Christian church in Scotland was founded around about 400 AD by St Ninian. But the oldest cathedral on mainland Scotland is Glasgow Cathedral, which was built around about the 12th century. The church that I grew up in, in Dalkeith, was built around about 1420, but records say that there had been a site of Christian worship there since as early as the 12th century, which is similar to us here in Ellen Parish Church, 
where there is a reference in the Book of Deer to Christian worship on the site that is the Ellen Parish Church since 1132, although, of course, the current building wasn't uh, built until 1777. Which, interestingly, in some of the research that I was reading, is a few years older than the site of, of the oldest site of continuous worship in New York City, which is St. Mark's in the Bowery. And that site is dedicated as a memorial to Peter Stuyvesant, who was the last Governor General of New Amsterdam. But what's interesting about all of these churches, whether they are the Aqaba Church, the Dura Ropus Church, St Ninian's Chapel, Glasgow Cathedral, St Nicholas Buclou Church or Ellen Parish Church, is that they are all piles of stones. Some of them possibly looking like a pile of stones now, or some of them carefully selected, multi-hued, carved and exquisite in architectural style. But in essence, they are just a pile of stones. One of the earliest letters addressed to a group of new Christians is written by a man called Peter. Peter was one of Jesus' closest disciples and Jesus called him the rock whom he would build the church upon. Tradition also paints him as the first pope. And in his letter he uses the image, the image of stones and buildings to make a point about how the church should be. So Alison is going to come and read a bit of that letter to us now. Alison. Our reading this morning is taken from the New Testament, from 1 Peter, chapter 2, reading from verses 2 to 10. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. And thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. Thank you, Alison. In this series we've called Social Network, we've been looking at how the community that Jesus formed is put together and what some of the characteristics of it are. Over the last few weeks we've explored how doubts and questions are important in any community as we wrestle with what it is that we believe in. We've considered that Jesus built relationships over meals and significant meals with his friends to build deep and lasting meaningful relationships with them. We've explored that Jesus protects us as a shepherd protects his flock, but that we need as followers of Jesus to spend time listening and spending time with Jesus through scripture reading and prayer to work out what his voice sounds like so that we're able to hear his voice above the noise that the world often makes that can drown that out. And this week, in this threshold moment where our governments have been considering how and when we might come out of lockdown, we're thinking a little bit about how our Christian community is built and sustained. 
The first letter of Peter was written to several churches located in Asia Minor, which is modern-day Turkey. And these churches are made up of a small community of faith scattered across the Roman Empire. Because they're a new community, because they're new communities worshipping in a new way, they're, they were viewed with suspicion and hostility. So Peter writes to offer them support and encouragement, but also to give them a sense of their identity, of their purpose. And what I think is significant is that Peter doesn't give them a set of rules to follow or a set of guidelines to tick off. He encourages this new community to see themselves as something different, something more organic. Because Peter knows that in order to grow a community, they need to know certain things. They need to know that they're loved by God, that they belong to God, and to live their lives in response to those things, not a list of rules to tick off and follow. Otherwise, the community would be so straight-jacketed, so rigid, that it wouldn't flourish. There's an old story about Hans the tailor. Because of Hans' reputation, an influential entrepreneur visiting the city that he worked in ordered a tailor-made suit from him. But when he came to pick up the suit, the customer found that one sleeve was twisted this way and another that way, one shoulder bulged out and the other one kind of caved in. And so he pulled and he managed to make his body contort to fit the suit. And as he returned home on the bus, another passenger noticed his peculiar appearance and asked if Hans the tailor had made the suit. The entrepreneur replied that he had and the man remarked, Amazing! I knew that Hans was a good tailor, but I had no idea he could make a suit fit so perfectly someone as deformed as you are. So Peter doesn't command them to squeeze themselves into one mould or another that doesn't really fit or suit their community or their circumstances. He doesn't encourage them to be like this or like that. He doesn't give them a 15 point manual on how to live as a Jesus following community. He encourages them to organically come together to be built into a spiritual community. What he says as the, is that they are being built into a spiritual house as they draw closer to Jesus, who Peter describes as the cornerstone of that spiritual house. And there's a subtlety in the language here. Peter doesn't say, build a spiritual house, as if it's a physical task to fulfil. He says to the people, to the community, to be built into a spiritual house as people, with each member as a kind of living stone, each helping to build this spiritual house, this organic community. Five years ago last Friday, the 8th of May 2015, was a significant day for me and for Ellen Parish Church, or at least I hope it was a significant-ish day for the life of Ellen Parish Church. It was the day that I was inducted as the new minister here, and it was also the day that I was ordained. And I remember us having a big service in the church building and a do afterwards in the Kirk Centre uh, with glasses of champagne, and it was a great day. But not even in my wildest imaginings would I have thought that five years later we wouldn't be allowed to worship together in our church buildings for a significant length of time. Yet when we start to look closely at scripture, and especially at what Peter is saying in this letter, what he's describing in this letter, what he's writing sounds a lot like the church we're living just now. And what we're seeing built over the last few weeks has been a spiritual community. We've had very little conversation about buildings and structures. And apart from the stained glass windows, what people are talking about missing is the fellowship and the community. And significantly, a massive increase in spontaneous organic talk about worship 
and about how worship and prayer sustains the life of the community through this time. And actually, even in those stained glass window conversations, it's not about the structures. Uh, it's, it's about how they help people to engage with God, which is why the windows were put in there in the first place. And what's more, the Kirk Centre in these last few weeks is less of a place where organisations hold meetings and more of a tool to help our ministry of reaching out to those in the greatest need in our community by sorting and housing the supplies for Basics Barn. So one of the decisions we'll have to make as a community, as the people of God in Ellen, is about what we do as a community when it's safe enough for the lockdown to be eased. We need to work out whether the stones and the bricks and the mortar of our church building and our Kirk Centre are going to be idols to our church that doesn't really exist anymore, or whether they're going to be a tribute the work of God in this place down through the ages, whether they're going to serve God's mission and ministry in Ellen now. Interestingly, I think we in Ellen Parish Church have never had much of a tradition of seeking after great significant architecture. The commissioning of the stained glass windows in the 1960s is probably one of the most significant examples. But the records of the Presbytery of Ellen around the time that the current building was built state this. They say it was agreed that there must be erected a new church capable of accommodating 1,200 people. Several plans are submitted. That adopted is one for 80 feet by 40 feet within walls at an estimated cost of £650 sterling the old church being given. And so the present ungainly oblong, with an eye only to capacity, was reared and opened for service in 1777. If we were in church together this Sunday, if we were together in the church building this Sunday, and I was preaching from the platform, then I would say to us to rise and to go out beyond these bricks and mortar, beyond these walls, to serve our community, to let yourself become a living stone. Let your life be shaped and transformed, moved, inspired and influenced by, the, by Jesus' life, death and resurrection. But I think that in some way this situation that we're living through has encouraged us and challenged us to do exactly that. Basics Barn, Neighbourhoods of Care, our partnership with the Ellen Community Resilience Team and a hugely increased online presence has gone some of the way to helping us be those living stones. But my prayer is that when we're back in the walls, when we're back in that ungainly oblong pile of stones among the stained glass windows and the seats. My prayer is that our church doesn't remain there, that you and I, the living stones, continue to build ourselves into a spiritual community and that our buildings help us to serve God in doing that. Let's pray together. Loving God, build us into living stones. May we be inspired by your life, your death and your resurrection to help us to build ourselves as a community to serve you. May each of us be a living stone to build your church not of bricks, not of mortar, not of stones, but a building made of grace and love and forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's
And now our prayer for others. Let us pray. God, we dedicate all the offerings that have been given to you and the work that we do to bring your kingdom nearer to this earth. We continue to pray for all those who are working essential jobs and their families. We are grateful for the work that keeps our world running during this time. We pray for those for whom idleness is taking its toll on their mental health, for those for whom isolation is wearing away at sanity. We pray for those who are worried about friends and family who they cannot go and see and look after. Let us look after those that we can on their behalf. We pray that world leaders would listen to experts who are seeking to preserve human life and welfare rather than those whispering in their ears with the interests of the wealthy. Let us not stand for a world after this that gives everything to the wealthy, taking food from the mouths of the poorest in the name of their God called the economy. Give us all patience with one another and strength to see this through and meet the end of this with love and community in our hearts, being willing to make a better world. In all this we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now for our next hymn, hymn 200, Christ Has Made the Sure Foundation.
Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Rachel, and to the choir for helping lead us in our worship this morning. If you would like uh, to join in our Zoom coffee morning on Thursday again, then we'd be delighted to spend a bit of time with you in that. The, uh, look up the information on the Allen Parish Church Facebook page and you'll be able to join in with that with the various IDs and the codes. Um, please come along with your cup of coffee and your home bakes uh, to that. Again, if you'd like to see the new moderator, Martin Fair, being installed, then you can go to the Facebook page, the um, Church of Scotland Facebook page, and uh, at 11 o'clock on Saturday, and you'll be able to see that. And remember him in your prayers this week and this year as he takes on his very unusual moderatorial year. Please, if you're able to put down any comments and join in with any chat, uh, uh, once the service is finished in the either the YouTube uh, comment section or in the Facebook comment, se comment section then we'd be delighted uh, to hear from you. Normally we have tea and coffee after the service and a bit of a time for a chat but of course we're not able to do that at the moment so this is sort of the next best thing uh, uh, where we can join in with a little bit of conversation at that point so please stick down some encouragement uh, and, uh, 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 and some hellos to any folks that you want to say hello to. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. So, go build your life on Jesus the Cornerstone. Go be his holy temple in this community. Go be the living stones built together into this spiritual place. Go be God's presence in the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you. And all who you love or find it difficult to love this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.
want the Bible things every heart adore Christ the everlasting God reigning at the Father's side from 